the opening um, material of the C major prelude, we're actually hearing the C and G, which give us the focal point, the center of gravity. And then there's this E mixed into it, which also happens to be the highest note. And so we're hearing that relationship. The next thing we hear is the F is added. Interestingly, put on top of everything else. And then the next thing we hear is a B is added to all of that. So we've now reached our entire diatonic complement. And that's made the music move somewhere. It's given us a larger uh, em embrace of the world than where we started. Now in this measure, the one with the E and A in it, um, yeah. I've lost my place. Oh, here we are. Okay. Here. So all the way down here, there is now the, the fifth that we're hearing, the perfect fifth, which gives us a center of gravity, is not on the flat side of the C major spectrum, but on the sharp side. So it makes everything turn towards that sense of uh, the brighter side. It's more moving away from our this center to, to that center. And then the next thing that happens is that F sharp. So at this point, we've not only sort of flirted a little bit with the notes over on the, on the sharp end of the spectrum, we've actually gone past our barrier, our boundary, in the sharps. And that takes us there. Later on in the piece, we get uh, uh, the use of B flat and C sharp, so we're going a little bit further outside. And an A flat. Involve very spread relationships on this spectrum and can only be heard through context. We're not talking about a G sharp and a B, we're talking about A flat and a B, and that's a very real psychological difference because when we hear A flat and B, we're hearing that note not as a G sharp but as an A flat. We're thinking of it as a flat note. It belongs, it's generated by going back several generations into the world of the flats that, that bore each other until we finally got to C. So a, a flat is great, great, great grandfather there. Um, so events that happen in this piece, for example, down here, uh, F sharp and E flat, followed by A flat. The bass line goes from F sharp, F sharp to A flat. century, they actually put a measure in between. They couldn't believe you could actually jump around from F sharp to A flat in your bass line. The Gunas Ave Maria has the G in there. I mean, you can't you know, have a, a diminished third when you're singing to the Blessed Virgin, for goodness sake. So, uh, you know, that's remarkable music. And in addition, when we hit this point, and this is what fascinates me about uh, great music, is that when you get this payoff, the uh, A flat, you also suddenly, the whole idea of this chord, which has always been a chord, and will continue to be a chord as we look at the rest of the piece, for one fleeting moment, is not a chord. That's not a chord. And just for this one moment, Bach compresses everything into this great sense of, of dissonance. I'm sorry. And once we pass that point, this is, this is also amazing, when we pass that point, what do we get? Well, I've made a, a pink little box here to indicate a dominant pedal tone. Dominant is this child of the key, and it's the one that always wants to go back to, to mama. So it's, it's the best way to sort of set up a final return home. And... Uh, it finally does that. But it, says, it takes a long, long time to do that, including some a little uh, drama on the side with the E flats and, and 
F sharps. so much at this point, the difference between these two chords is so almost insignificant that uh, we've felt this kind of expansion process that uh, gives the entire piece not only a, a form that you can look at in terms of high and low and dissonance and consonance, but also in, just in terms of time expansion and contraction. Um, the one thing that, that I had to say in my little uh, talk about the spectrum is almost all common practice pieces generally go to the child's house first. If you have a piece in C major, you want to go to G major before you do anything else because that makes you feel like you really have uh, stocked up your, your place in the world. And if the child actually has a child of its own, you know, if, you're in, if you have G major that has D major as its little uh, baby hanging around it, then you can really feel like you've made your, your name in the world. But the big problem is your grandparent, or if you happen to be the parent, the, your parent, um, in the key of C major, F. That's a problem, because those keys always want to take over. Subdominant, if you get too soon to subdominant, it sounds like you've actually you know, recessed back into, your, into the old world. And uh, so the whole plot of most common practice music is that you always, you know, have you looking forward to your children and your, your grandchildren, and then towards the end you can start looking at uh, your parents, and you can have a clickable cadence. But you can't do that at the beginning of the piece, or it's going to sound like it's one going to five instead of four, one, four going to one. Um, of course, Beethoven turned it all around. He would pieces that would start with the subdominant key, and uh, that's a whole other story. Um, so that's, that's the plot of this piece, and uh, in an effort to move ahead, I, I don't think you need to hear this one again, but I hope next time you hear it, whether it's me playing it or somebody playing it, that uh, all of these things will sort of come together into this uh, incredible construction. So we want to move ahead to, from the perhaps simplest piece to uh, perhaps the most complicated one. And this is the C major fugue. 